Hello. Hello, hello. Dude, why is the, f the fan is so freaking loud? <laughs> um, I want to figure out how to turn it off. Maybe, but hello. It is I. Uh, hold on. I. Hi, everyone. It is me. Oh my gosh, thank you for the gifted membership, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone. I haven't streamed in a little while. How long is it? I don't know how long it's been. It's been a little it's been a little bit of time. Um Yeah. It's been a little bit of time. Um I have I have a lab final for my freaking microbiology class. And I'm so I'm so stressed. You know when you get so stressed that you don't that you don't study? I never understand why it works like that, but it does. It really does, you know? <laughs> it really do. It really do work like that. I'm like, come on, I'm so stressed out about the studying that I can't study. So I'm going to stream because then I can't I can't go and watch YouTube for hours. I mean, I could, but y'all would be like, study, you know? I'm hoping, at least. <laughs> but I, I always do really bad on lab exams. Always. Always, always, always. I... It's so weird. I, I think it's because they're mostly like memorization and visual stuff and it just, I don't know, goes in one of my eyes and then out the other one. But Twitter is broken. <laughs> Twitter is not letting me tweet! <laughs> I was going to announce that I was live on Twitter but, oh, wait, I think it finally worked. It shouldn't take three tries to tweet something. Okay, it finally worked. Thank goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's always so hard to remember to... I'm gonna ping the Discord too. Sorry, I should have done this earlier. But like, I didn't. <laughs> so I won't. Okay. There we go. Okay. It's been successfully announced everywhere. Everyone knows now. Everyone knows now. It is... It is a known fact. Okay, okay. There we go. So. No more Twitter? You mean X? No, I mean Twitter. I'm not calling it X. That's such a dumb name. Okay, I... Uh, let me see here. It's so dark in here. Like, all between it being so rainy and cloudy outside, and there only being one bulb and this freaking light, it's so dark in here. Like, my the screens are hurting my eyes. Does this lamp turn on? Uh, yes, does it? It does it turn on? Uh, it would not appear so. Wait, oh, wait, not back here. Did I unplug it? I don't. Come on. Turn on! I. No, wait, that's a. That's not a. That's not a switch. 
Yeah, I don't know how to turn it on. <laughs> Sounds like you're in an interrogation chamber. <laughs> With the fan! I don't know why the fan is so loud. It is, though. It is. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not in my room. I'm in, I'm in my brother's room because my sister's in my room, so... I have permission to come in here because we share a computer. So, yeah. Just in here. And I don't know where everything is because it's not my room. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm very stressed over this, but we'll be fine. Mm -mm. So one of the things I have to know is the lab safety stuff. But why? Why do I have to take an exam then I close it? I don't know. How hydrated are you right now? Um, I don't know, I just ate not that long ago and I, I drink, I normally drink a good amount of water when I eat. Lab safety don't blow up. You know what's funny? My, when I was in chemistry, um, my, I, I found this really funny and maybe my humor is broken, but <laughs> I found it really funny funny like um in the lab safety section of my chemistry lab book it had the words and i quote if you catch on fire do not panic <laughs> if you were to catch on fire please do not panic and i'm like what i i think any sane person would panic if they caught on fire like, I don't choose to panic, you know? Like, I'm gonna be panicking. <laughs> don't panic. Like, saying that isn't helpful, you know? If I set on fire, I'm going to panic. <laughs> it doesn't seem, it doesn't sound like a fun experience that I, I, I don't want to catch on fire. <laughs> How often do you reckon people actually do catch on fire? I don't know. I mean, there's a reason they put it in the book. <laughs> it happens, you know? It happens. Hopefully it will not happen to me at any point in my life. Okay. I'm going to open my notes. I didn't take that many. Oh. I should have, but like, you know, I didn't want to. <laughs> I was like, I don't need notes! And then later I'm like, why, why didn't I take, why did I just take freaking notes? I don't know! Why am I like this? I don't know! It's so dark in here, I feel like it's nighttime. I don't like that, I, I I'm gonna fall asleep. <laughs> I don't want to fall asleep. <laughs> Okay. Oh. I guess I'm just gonna... Do I have to read through all four pages of lab safety? <sighs> said it was... She said it was part of the exam, so... I guess so. I don't... Lab safety is so boring! I don't care! I'm not gonna explode anything.
Uh, I feel like most lab safety boils down to common sense. I know. I don't want to. I'll I'll skim over it. <laughs> Wash your hands. Clean the thing. Don't throw any waste into the sink. Obviously. You know, I don't I told this to someone. I don't remember who I told it to. <laughs> I I don't go outside much, and when I get a story, I tell it to everyone I know, and some people I tell multiple times. <laughs> because I forget who I told it to. But I'll say it anyway. I I was in a I was in a bathroom on campus recently, and it was I don't remember which one it was, but it was like when I don't go in very often, and I went in there, and there's always like those signs. Like I I I don't know how familiar you are with <laughs> women's bathrooms, but there's always, not always, I feel like on like college campuses and stuff, there's always these signs on the inside of the stall door like, hey, don't, don't flush uh, feminine products down the toilet, right? Okay, so this sign said that, it said don't flush feminine products down the toilet, uh, don't flush wipes down the toilet. Do not flush coffee grinds down the toilet. I was like... What? <laughs> Who is flushing coffee grinds down the toilet? To the frequency to which they had to put up a sign? <laughs> what do people do in those bathrooms? Like, I don't know why you'd flush a freaking tampon in the toilet, but like, okay, that kind of makes sense. But like... Why are you flushing coffee down the toilet? I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. There's so many. I've seen so many signs in bathrooms like, hey, don't flush this. And I'm like, duh. <laughs> Apparently, it's not common sense. <laughs> Uh, the laboratory technique depends primarily on knowing what you are to do. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Be careful with flames. Ah, yeah. Be careful with fire. Had no idea that fire caught on things that things caught on fire wow that was <laughs> that was a sentence um be careful with glass equipment wow who to thunk guys I'm at Asus I'm just kidding this is like a very small part <laughs> of the text When diluting a concentrated acid, always remember to add the acid to the water. Add the acid to the water. Oh, thank you for the gifted, Robert! Um, shoot, I forgot what I was... <laughs> I forgot what I was doing. Um, yeah, add the acid to the water. Okay. It is always best to use a water bath to heat liquids in a test tube. However, the contents of the test tube must be heated directly in a flame. Don't concentrate the flame in a single spot of the test tube. Try to uniformly expose the contents of the test tube to the flame. Never point the end of the test tube towards yourself or your neighbor. That makes sense. <laughs> Never heat a closed vessel such as a tightly stopped te stoppered test tubes. Pressure builds up and an explosion may result. Oh, I know how to make an explosion now. Oh, thank you for the two months. <laughs> the first rule of safety is to have fun. Actually, on here it said it was 
to, to, to treat any cuts or abrasions before entering the laboratory. But you know, I think that's a better, <laughs> it's a better one. <laughs> yeah, definitely have fun before all else. That's, that's, that's gonna, that's gonna end well. Oh, thank you for the two months too, Robert. <laughs> Safety also includes personal hygiene. I don't know. It doesn't say that on here. <laughs> You're making up stuff. It, it it just says to wash your hands. It doesn't say I have to take a shower. Come on. <laughs> How dare you call me out. Has it really been two months? When did I open memberships? I gotta look now. I gotta look now, I have to know. I'm gonna scroll back on my community tab because I think that's where the first I said it. Mm. Ta da, keep going. Yep, two months ago. What day? Does it tell me what day? It just says two months ago. I really wish YouTube would tell you a day. <laughs> no, it's just like two months ago. I'm like, okay. Crazy. Okay. Um... Oh my gosh, thank you for the $20! Well, it's nineteen ninety nine. You know what? <laughs> it's twenty. <laughs> Thank you. Let's celebrate the first super on a live stream. Your first super on a live stream? Oh my gosh! Thank you. That's definitely in. Uh... Wait, no. Yes, that deserves celebration. <laughs> I can't talk. Two months, sixteen days. <laughs> You know this better than I do. <laughs> I'm keeping the one cents. <laughs> it's alright, you can have it. <laughs> when you live in America, everything is 99. <laughs> so, that's so true. That's so true. They think that it looks less expensive if they put in the 99. But everyone just rounds it in their head. It's one cent. Gosh darn. You have you have me pulling out like my coins instead of just giving you dollar bills. <laughs> Thank you for the two months. Thank you. Um, where was I on here? <laughs> Notify your lab instructor whenever a thermometer is broken. Yeah, that's good to know. I don't. I'm not using a thermometer. I haven't used a thermometer in the in this lab. <laughs> I have used the thermometer. <laughs> This symbol indicates a biohazard. Wow! No crap! I didn't know that the that, that symbol was for a biohazard. <laughs> I didn't know that. Wow, that's crazy. Um, if you're using a material with this symbol on it, ask about proper handling instructions. Oh yeah, because the bacteria that I've handled in this class just has a biohazard symbol on it. <laughs> It doesn't. It's tiny. Uh, <laughs> Be careful with bacteria. You don't want to get sick. Please tell me that sarcasm. Of course it's sarcasm. <laughs> I, I know what a biohazard symbol is, man. I'm... I've literally used the incubator so many times that has one on there. It... It feels the need to say biohazard. That's what I don't get. Like, they make you memorize the biohazard symbol, and yet everywhere I've seen one in my entire life, it says biohazard underneath the symbol. Like, why do we even, <laughs> why do we even have a symbol? I'm just kidding. It's, it's better. It, you see a symbol and you go, ah, you know, instead of having to read, especially if you don't speak English.
Okay, let's see here. Um, be prepared to act. Blah blah blah. If corrosive liquids touch your skin, flood with water. That makes sense. The eye wash station. I've never seen anyone use one. Like, I've heard so much about them over the years, but I've never, like, seen anyone have to use one. Thank goodness. They look scary. I hate having things in my eyes. I don't want to have to wash my eyes. That's. Ugh. ugh. It, it says it right here, guys. It actually says it right here. If you catch on fire, do not panic. Use the fire blanket or shower if it is close. If then, if not, then stop, drop, and roll to put the fire out and firm your structure as soon as possible. <laughs> if you catch on fire, do not panic. <laughs> I don't know. That cracks me up every time. I don't know why. If the ac if an accident occurs in which the instructor is a victim, tell another instructor immediately. <laughs> ah, that makes sense. Everything in here. If this happens, tell your instructor. <laughs> what if it was the instructor? Then you gotta find another one. You chem major? No, I'm a biology major. <laughs> I do. I have to do the chemistry things, though, cause you know, biology has a lot of like. Stuff you have to know from others. Ner? Whoa. It's with the accent. No. <laughs> from other sciences, I feel like. Especially chemistry. How the hell am I supposed to not panic when I'm on fire? That's what I'm saying! <laughs> That's crazy. Keep your backpacks away from workspaces, I know. It's clean off the counter. Read reagent labels. Yes, read the labels. <laughs> Be careful not to contaminate reagents, that makes sense. Only a glassware that is fire safe, such as Pyrex. There's this glassware that isn't fire safe. Terrible glassware. I don't think we have any of that. <laughs> I don't, we have one. <laughs> my my friend did this. He freaking uh, melted part of his test tube <laughs> with the Bunsen burner. Cause like we were doing the biochemical tests, right? And like <laughs> and like. It has the test tubes, and just one of them is plastic, and the others were glass. <laughs> he burned the end of one of them. <laughs> Pyrex will explode if you heat it too much. It'll explode? That's crazy. A lot of science involves other sciences. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. What was that? Um. Blah blah. Ah uh, yes, and if a student is pregnant and nursing a baby, she will not be allowed to attend the laboratory sessions. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> Man, maybe I should just fake pregnancy to get out of lab. <laughs> No, I don't- I don't even think people would believe me! <laughs> but how can we make super babies if they're not allowed in the lab? <laughs> True. <laughs> how 
Can you fake that? I don't know. Say that I'm pregnant? They'll, they'll believe me, right? <laughs> Don't believe me? More safety practices. Ugh, it's so boring! Treat all micro microorganisms as potential pathogens. Sterilize equipment and materials. Disinfect work areas before and after use. Wash your hands. Never pipette by mouth. Do not eat or drink in lab nor store food in areas where microorganisms- Micro- mi Microorganisms are stored. Maple everything clearly. Auto clave, disinfect all waste materials. Clean up, s up spills with care. Yay. That. Wow. I. I know. <laughs> I know! Okay, here we got the biosafety levels. This I probably do need to pay attention to. Uh. Okay. Biosafety levels BSL are a series of protections regulated to autoclave related activities that take place in particular particular biological labs. Yay. Exciting. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. I'm learning about bacteria. <laughs> they don't have mitochondria. They don't have membrane bound organelles because they're prokaryotes. I came back and immediately hear that you should not panic if you're on fire. Yeah, that's what I've learned at the study session so far. You should not panic if you're on fire. <laughs> Hi Plushy, good luck with studying. I'm also studying. Good luck to you too! Thank you! I don't know why, but everyone I talk to when I'm talking about like my major, someone will always say some it's like if we talk about bio, if I talk about biology long enough with someone who doesn't know much about it, it'll always someone will say the other person will say mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> it has not failed. Everybody knows that. It's 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 funny. It's funny to me. <laughs> so it's very funny to me. It's a common thing that I hear. <laughs> What happens if you do panic when you're on fire? Then you might set other people on fire. You might set the building on fire, you might set the school on fire, you might set the city on fire, you might set the world on fire. You might set the universe on fire. <laughs> the world's gonna end. <laughs> All because you have feelings. <laughs> okay. These levels, which are ranked from 1 to 4, are selected based on the agents or organisms that are being researched or work on in any given laboratory setting. For example, a basic lab setting specializing in the research of non-lethal agents that pose a minimal potential threat to lab workers in the environment are generally considered BSL-1, the lowest biosafety lab level, a specialized research laboratory that deals with potentially deadly infectious agent agents <laughs> like Ebola would be dis de uh, design de designated <coughs> be designated as a BSL-4, the highest and most uh, uh, sh uh, wait, what word is this? String stringent? Str wait <laughs> what word is this? String stringent? Str <laughs> I don't know Your videos help me fall asleep at night. Please keep up the good work. Thanks. Oh, thank you for the $10. I'm glad that it helps you. Thank you. I can heart super chats now, apparently. That's cool. St 
stringent? Yes, I think that's the word. Strict or precise. I never heard that word in my life before. I learned a new word today. I accomplished something by studying. Okay. The Centers for Disease... I can't read. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention sets uh, BSL level lab lab it's BSL lab levels Ugh. BSL lab level it's the Allen in the lab that gets me I don't know <laughs> string gent a gentlemanly piece of string <laughs> that's funny HBSL lab level builds upon the previous level, thereby creating a layer upon layer of constraints and barriers. These levels, these lab levels, are determined by the following risks related to contaminant, severity of infection, transmittability, transmissibility. My bad. Severe severity of infection. Uh, I already read that. Nature of the work conducted, origin of the microbe agent in question, route of exposure. Thank you for the gifted, Robert! It's like, what, three now? Thank you! The reason biosafety levels are so important is because they dictate the type of work practices that are allowed to take place in a lab setting. They also heavily influence the overall design of the facility in question, as well as the type of specialized safety equipment used within it. Uh, this is so boring. When am I- When am I gonna get to the harder stuff? This is just the beginning and it's already been like half an hour. Uh, wait, it's been an hour? Ain't no way. I don't accept that. Ain't no way. It's been an hour. Oh, I am. Not doing well. Okay. BSL 1 is the lowest level of the four. Biosafety level 1 applies lab to- uh, well, probably skip over most of this. Mechanical pipetting only? Yeah, none of this pipetting by mouth. That sounds scary! Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you do that? Safe sharps handling, avoidance of splashes or aerosals? Aerosals? Aerosols? Yeah, that's it. I think. <laughs> I know how to spell it, I don't know how to say it. It's been like 30 minutes in the stream. Huh, why does it say an hour ago then? Wait, I gotta look at like OBS now. 39 minutes. Okay, why does YouTube say an hour? I'm confused. <laughs> Is it rounding up all of a sudden? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um. Daily decontamination of all workspaces, work surfaces when work is complete, hand washing, prohibition of food, drink, and smoking materials in lab setting, personal protective equipment such as eye protection, gloves, and lab coat or gown, biohazard signs. BSL labs also requires immediate decontamination after spills, infection, inf infection materials are also decontaminated prior to, uh, excuse me, prior to disposal, generally through the use of an autoclave. Um, BSL 2, appropriate personal protective equipment must be worn, including lab coats and gloves, eye protection and face shields can also be worn as needed. All procedures that can cause infection from aerosols or splashes are performed within the biological safety cabinet. An autoclave or an altern alternative method of decontamination is available for proper disposals. The laboratory has self-closing lockable doors. Ooh. Thank you for the gifted... Oh, wait. I misread. <laughs> Thank you for gifting yourself a membership. <laughs> Welcome, Dave. Welcome to the membership. I misread that. <laughs> Thank you for gifting yourself a membership. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Okay. Uh... A sink and eye wash station should be readily available. Biohazard warning signs. Access to BSL-2 lab is far more restrictive than BSL-1 lab. Outside personnel or those with increased risk of contamination often restricted from entering when work is being conducted. BSL-3. 
Standard personal protective equipment must be worn. Must be must. <clears throat> Thank you for the gifted, Robert. Must be worn. Oh, I cannot talk. Must be worn, and respirators might be required. Solid front wraparound gowns, scrub suits, or coveralls are often required. All work with microbes must be performed within an appropriate uh, BSC. What? Biosafety cabinet? Yeah. What? What is it with scientists and the abbreviations? Just say, just say biological safety cabinet. Would it kill you? Oh my gosh, welcome! Welcome to, uh, the membership. Uh, da, da, da. Where am I? Where was I? Um, solid front rem- I already said that. Yeah. Access hands-free sink and eye wash are available near the exit. Sustain directional airflow to draw air into the laboratory from clean areas towards potentially contaminated areas. Exhaust air cannot be recirculated. Self-closing set of locking doors with access away from general building corridors. Access the BSL-3 laboratory is restricted and controlled at all times. And now, BSL-4. It's just a big one. We're studying microbiology. Um... Personnel are required to change clothing before entering, shower upon exiting, decontamination of all materials before exiting. Personnel must wear appropriate personal protective equipment from prior BSL levels, as well as a full body air supplied positive pressure suit. Spacesuit? <laughs> Class 3 bio. Not a spacesuit, I'm, I'm joking. Class 3 biological safety cabinet. Class 3. A BSL-4 laboratory is extremely isolated, often located in a separate building or in an isolated and restricted zone of the building. The laboratory also features a dedicated supply and exhaust air as well as vacuum lines and decam decontamination systems. Okay. <sighs> okay. Are we done with that now? Wait, actually, there's this picture here. I read the stuff. Do I have to also look at the pictures? Yeah, I already read the stuff. I Pictures... Some pictures do it for me, some don't. It's weird. Um, okay. Let's see. What's this? Safety quiz. I already did that a long time ago. Lighting a Bunsen burner? I know how to do that. I do it all the time. Okay, gene transferring bacteria. Yay, we get to talk about fun stuff now. <laughs> Yay. Oh, wait, I really... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this word. <laughs> uh, am I allowed to say this word? Plushie, can I ask what your major is? I am a biology major. Thanks for the study stream. Now we can stress together. Exactly. <laughs> Fred bacteria as the little fellows for the rest of the stream. I would, but I I need to remember it correctly. <laughs> uh, if it's a science word, it, it's it has three letters. You know that word? I'll just I'll just om omit that word. Just I don't want to be bonked. <laughs> just say scientifically. Um. I don't know. I'm just. <laughs> uh. Blank pill I used to give direct cell to cell contact. Plasmid is re replicated and transferred. 
Yay. And there's pictures. Yay. It's a... Pelli. It's the singular of a Pelli is a Pelis, I think. That's how you say it. Say it in another language. <laughs> I don't know another language. <laughs> I don't know any other language. <laughs> I don't think there's any issues with that one, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> yeah. Guys, you know what word it is. It's three letters. It starts with S. What What else could it be? <laughs> um. They have the plasmid gets transferred to the other bacteria. And then they both have one. Wait, it gets duplicated and then, yeah, it gets replicated, not duplicated. Terms, plushy terms. Welcome, Star! Welcome, welcome! <laughs> what are you guys trying to get me to say now? You know what word I'm talking about, surely. Soy? <laughs> okay, maybe you don't know it. <laughs> Why wouldn't I be allowed to say soy on stream? <laughs> You're just coming up with all of them. I, I, fine, I'll, I'll spell it. I'll, you know what? I'll spell it for you if you promise to move on. <laughs> I'm making too big of a deal out of it. We're talking about freaking bacteria. It's not weird. I'll, I'll spell it for you, okay? I'll spell it for you. It's S and then E and then X. <laughs> okay. And then... The combination between F factor and chromosome occurs at the specific site on each. What's F factor? Is that the plasmid? <laughs> okay, yeah. What an F factor in parentheses a plasmid? So an F factor is a plasmid. I never, I never learned. Uh, I never learned about. I never learned that it was called that. That's weird. What's it called an F when it's a plasmid? Where did you get F from? <laughs> oh no, not the internet police. <laughs> I told y'all I didn't want to say it, now y'all are being dramatic. <laughs> I'm talking about bacteria exchanging DNA, this is, this isn't even about people. Fun fact! Bacteria reproduce asexually. They split into two. <laughs> Thank you for the gifted, Robert. Exchanging DNA is pretty sus. <laughs> I mean, I guess so. <laughs> Bacteria people too. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Okay, and this, when an HFR donor passes a portion of the chromosome into an uh, F negative recipient, a recombinant F negative cell results. Uh, so basically it gives it from like the DNA and not like plasmid DNA, is what you're saying? Like the main DNA. I wish I could reproduce asexually to split into two smaller versions of myself. Honestly? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. <laughs> the world is not ready for two of me, though. That'd be too much. <laughs> okay. And then here's a picture. Um. Oh, and 
then there's this test. I learned about this test in freaking cell and mole. Cellular and molecular biology. Sorry. I'm using the science words. <laughs> World population just doubles overnight. <laughs> that is crazy. So what they did, this experiment, I remember. There's the, uh, the, it's a uh, streptococcus uh, pneumoniae. Streptococcus pneumoniae? I don't know. The smooth cells they put into a mouse, and then the mouse died. The rough cells they put into the mouse, and then the mouse lived. And then they killed the smooth cells. And they put them in the mouse, and the mouse lived. Then, they killed the smooth cells, and put them in the mouse. And then they put living rough cells in the mouse. And then the mouse died. Because, and then, when they isolated uh, the bacteria colonies from the mouse, there was some smooth bacteria or something. <laughs> But basically, it's because there is DNA exchange between the dead cells and the and the living ones. So the mouse died. Hello, I'm here. Welcome. Um. Uh, so transformation. So, conjugation is when they're alive, and they do it, and then transformation is when one of them's dead, and then the other one just comes and takes their DNA. <laughs> it's come and abduct their DNA fragments. And they accept some of them, and I guess the others, they degrade. Thank you for the uh, for another gifted. Gosh dang. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now I'm broke. <laughs> I would think so. That's crazy. <laughs> Let me write in my notes. Plasma DNA comes and goes. Integrated DNA stays. Restriction enzyme degrades unwanted DNA. To avoid, uh, avoid by using plasmid. Heat shock forces plasmid exception. Oh, that's interesting. If you make them if you make them hot, they'll accept the plasmid. That's interesting. I'm a guy I like wearing female clothes, is it okay? Of course it is. You can wear other clothes you like. Ugh. Let me see here. Transformation. Oh yeah, we can take the DNA fragments or the DNA plasmids. Cold calcium chloride followed by heat shock. Cold calcium chloride. So you put them in cold cal calcium chloride and then you shock them with heat and then they and then they take up the plasmid. It's also electro electroporation. I I heard about that one too before. Electroporation. You can force them to accept the DNA. You hold them at gunpoint, you're like, accept this plasmid, they're like, no, and you're like, yes you will, and they're like, okay. <laughs> The plushy ASMR is the powerhouse of the stream. <laughs> um. Let's see here. Transduction. Gene transfer occurs through bacteriophage. Okay, so there are three. I remember that there are three. There's three. Conjugation uh, <laughs> is when the bacteria uh, do the thing. <laughs> Transformation is when they take it from the dead bacteria. Transduction is when they get it from the viruses. Yeah. So 
So then picture phages. Phage infects the donor cell. Phage DNA and proteins are made. And the bacterial chromosomes is broken into pieces. Occasionally during phage assembly, piece, pieces of bacterial DNA are packaged in the phage capsid. Then the donor cell lyses and releases phage particles containing bacterial DNA. The phage carrying bacterial DNA infects a new host. And then recombination can occur. Crazy. It's from the... It's from the... The virus is carrying it around. Alright. glow stuff. This was a cool lab that we did. If only all the others were this simple. <laughs> Holy. Um. Can we genetically transform an organism? Yes. Wow. Shocking. I love how the PowerPoint is black with green letters. <laughs> it's funny. GFP is green fluorescent protein obtained from jellyfish and causes bacteria to glow under ultraviolet light. The, the blah gene for the beta lactamase. This provides the bacteria with resistance to ampicillin. P glow is regulated by arabinose? Ar 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 R A A R A no shut up A R A B I N O S E <laughs> I can spell guys <laughs> I can spell I swear um so the beta lactamase gives ampicillin resistance so there are four media the L B which is just the like the control and then there's one with ampicillin there's two with ampicillin and then one and then one with i think we made five actually so there's there's just the control i think we might have made six i don't remember there's a control right it's just normal and then we have them with just the ampicillin. We have the ones that are positive for the PGLO and the ones that are negative. Then we have the ones with ampicillin and arabinose. Uh, one for the negative, one for the positive uh, PGLO. And then the procedure. Wow. Grab two micro test tubes and label one positive PGLO and the other negative PGLO. Add 250 microliters of transformation solution. So the calcium chloride. So you add the calcium chloride and then you put it in ice. Yeah, I remember this. You put the calcium chloride and then you put it in ice. Then you add the bacteria. Then add the plasma DNA to the PGLO tube only. Place the tube on ice for 10 minutes. Then you put it in the 42 uh, Celsius water bath for 50 seconds. This the heat shock. And then you place the tubes on ice for another two minutes. Then you add 250 microliters of broth to both tubes. Close the lids and let stand at room temperature for 10 minutes. Mix tubes by tapping, not shaking. Add 100 microliters of transformation and control suspension on the appropriately labeled plates. Spread the suspensions evenly across the agar using a new sterile loop for each plate to prevent contamination. And normally, when I when we use the sterile loops, we like we use them and then you and then you like you burn them with the Bunsen burner to like uh, clean them. <laughs> I forget the word. 
need to clean them. And then... And then... Shoot, what was I saying? I got... I... My brain... Oh yeah, but for the for this experiment, for some reason, we use like disposable ones, and we use a different one every time. It's kind of annoying, actually. With the plates, stack tape, put in the incubator. So, what happened is the the ones that had the plasmid for the glowing also had the a beta lactamase. Is that it? It has had the beta lactamase. Yeah, my notes are terrible. Yeah, the beta lactamase, which rep which um, supplies uh, resistance to ampicillin. So the ones that were positive survived in the plate that only had the ampicillin. But, 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 they didn't glow because they need the arabinose to glow. So the ones with ampicillin and arabinose, the ones that were positive glows, and obviously the ones that are negative don't. In fact, they weren't even alive. They died. And the ampicillin. Thank you for the one dollar, Robert. Thank you. I hear this is your first, oh, their first, uh, super... Thank you. Huh. Okay, and that's me. Okay. Quick guide. I don't know. I feel like I understand that one pretty well. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I feel like I understand. Using my- I know how to use a mic- oh wait, actually, I do need to know the fancy words. Uh, we're nowhere close to the- it's already 3.30 and I haven't even made it to the hard stuff yet. Like, we're still at the- uh, we're still at the easy stuff. Mmm. I stress. <sighs> okay. I got this. <sighs> mm, sorry. Mm. Compound light microscope. Compound denotes the presence of two lenses. Ocular and objective. The ocular is the lens in the eyepiece. The magnification is 10 times. The objective is the lens in the nose piece. The magnification is on low power, it's 10 times. On high power, it's 40 or 45. And with the oil immersion, it's 100 times. Okay, and visualize your stress as a box and picture yourself outside of it, outside of the box of stress. I don't, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> that doesn't make, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, so low power, 10 times 10 is 100x. 10 times 45 is 450, and then oil immersion 10 times 100 is 1000 dex. So, because so it, ma it multiplies, it magnifies. Uh, of course it magnifies. It's a freaking magnification lens. It multiplies. <laughs> Drop kick your stress out the window. Out the window. I. I don't know where it is. How am I supposed to drop kick it? I don't even know how to drop kick. Okay. Um. 
<sighs> focus. I'm using a microscope. I don't know how to focus. But I know how to focus using a microscope. Okay, here's the picture of the eyepiece ocular ten times. It's thumb wheel. What the heck is it? Th is that the thing that like adjusts the eyepiece? I don't know. Objectives ten times, forty times, a hundred times. The arm, mechanical stage, course and fine adjustments, adjustments, <laughs> mechanical stage controls, condenser, base eliminator. Slide holder clip. So the base eliminator is the light. The condenser is the like thing that 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 I don't know what it does actually. It's above the light. I know where it is. I don't know what it does. Oh oh okay. Wait, it's telling me what everything does or just yeah, light condenser. It tells me what the light condenser does. I knew I didn't know. That's crazy. Located okay, beneath the stage, adjustment knob controls the raising and lowering of the condenser. The condenser also contains a lever for opening and closing the diaphragm. Yeah, it told me nothing about what it does. That's great. This <laughs> stress is like fire, don't panic when it's on you. <laughs> How do you not panic when stress is on you? How do you not panic when fire is on you? I don't know. Okay, terms, 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 terms. Um, resolving power is the ability to distinguish details of a specimen. Okay. Field of view, the area of the slide that can be seen through the microscope. Depth of focus, the vertical distance the specimen is in focus. Working distance, the distance between the top of the cover slip and the low power objective lens. Parafocal lenses, ob objective lenses constructed and mounted so that their focal planes are approximately the same. The specimen remains in focus and centered in the field of view when you, when you change, change, I think that's supposed to say change, but it's missing an N from one parafocal lens to another virtual image. This is the image that you actually see when you look through the objective lens it might appear both larger and far away both larger and farther away than the specimen on the stage wait why is that the way it works i just realized it is exactly what it's like it looks bigger but further away retinal image this image is formed by the rays of light striking the retina of your eye wow i didn't think we'd get that specific <laughs> Okay. <sighs> Video using a microscope? I don't care. I know how to use a microscope. Uh, improving resolving power. If you're wearing a lab coat, you don't really feel the fire. I know from personal experience. What? You've been on fire? That's insane. That's wild. That's crazy. I'm surprised Blushy can reach the microscope. Probably needs a step stool. <laughs> I'm not that sure. Gosh dang. I mean, hey, at least you didn't say you needed a microscope to see me. That would have been... That would have been low, man. <laughs> Do bacteria need lab coats too, then? I don't know. Let's see they have, like, to endospores. I think, are endospores like lab coats? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Plus, she needs a booster seat to drive. No, I don't. Although I will admit, it, it was hard to find a car I could properly see out of without a booster seat. <laughs> if I'm sitting in a booster seat, I can't reach the pedals, though. <laughs> but I can see, I have, I have a Kia Soul, and I can see out of it just fine. And the seat's not even all the way up. It can go up higher than it is. It's not all the way up. But in some of the cars that I... Like, when I was looking for a car, in some of the cars I sat in, like I couldn't see crap when I was all the way up. In <laughs> um, a compound microscope, the image from the objective lens is magnified again by the ocular lenses. Total magnification is the objective lenses has the ocular lens. I knew that. Mm, are you going to tell me everything I already know? Oh, I'm tired. I'm too tired for this. I don't want to study. I want to sleep. The diaphragm regulates the amount of light passing from the light source through the specimen and through the lens system of the microscope. By properly adjusting the diaphragm, you can provide better contrast between the surrounding medium and your specimen, thus greatly improving the images. I don't know what that I I process zero of that. Plus, you the microbes are depending on me. Don't sleep. <laughs> Man. Most of this course had to kill microbes, not gonna lie. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what that slide has to say. There's too much words on it. I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna read the bold stuff and then I'm gonna skip <laughs> You can't put too much words in the same slide or I won't read it. Because my brain will be like, uh, 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 Oh my gosh, thank you for the two dollars! Do not give up, you can finish studying. No sleepy? Oh, okay, I'll try. Thank you. YouTube tells me this is your first super on a live stream, so thank you! I'm kidding, everyone's first super, so what the heck? Is it just me, or is it like YouTube? Because it says on a live stream, that's crazy. Mm. Resolution is the ability of the lenses to distinguish two points, uh, to separate to separate two objects that are close together. A microscope with a resolving power point four nanometers can distinguish between two points greater than point two. Uh, by me point four, <laughs> point four nanometers apart or in s apart, apart. I guess. Wavelengths of light used as is a major function in resolution. Shorter wavelengths of light provide greater resolution. Shorter wavelengths of light provide greater resolution. That makes sense because they like hit stuff more. That makes sense. The bold stuff is what's important. Exactly. That's why it's in bold. Mmm. Refractive index is the light bending ability of a medium. The light may bend in air so much that it misses a small high magnification lens. That's why we put immersion oil. So it doesn't bend. No, n no light is around to bend around here. Light is refracted or bent when passing from one medium to another. Refractive index, a measurement of how greatly a substance slows. The velocity of light. Direction and magnitude of bending is determined by the refractive indexes of the two media forming the interface. All that I'm gathering from this is the oil makes the light not bounce. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, that's too much words. <laughs> too much words. I don't think I need to know, like, the super specific stuff uh, about that. Okay. Microscope types. I do need to know this. This is important. I might take a, the whiteboard for this. The whiteboard! Oh, I cannot talk to this! Where? 
That's cool. Actually, I didn't think oil would be used for optical purposes. Yeah. I put it there so the light doesn't bounce everywhere. And... I don't know. It works. Uh, I want to sleep. <laughs> Chat, I, I studied. Can I go to sleep now? I'm actually like nowhere close to finishing studying all the material. Uh, it's in two days, Chuck. <laughs> two days. I don't want to take the exam. I'm gonna do so bad. Oh, I don't want to. <laughs> no, he may not sleep. Oh, <laughs> freaking one hundred dollars. Oh. Well, I can't say no to. Oh my gosh. Whoa, you sent it twice? That's insane. Okay, I can't say no to that. I, okay, I gotta stay awake now. Uh, did you send it twice on accident? That's not good. If so, I hope it's just appearing twice to me and isn't actually there twice. Oh no. Well, thank you for all the money. Holy crap. Wow. Thank you for the money. Okay. Well, I guess I can't sleep now. Return of the King? Isn't that freaking... Lord of the Rings? Flushing tags is insane. <laughs> give me your money. <laughs> Just kidding. You don't have to give me your money if you don't have any. Okay. Um, the bright field microscope uses visible light as a source of illumination. Cannot resolve structures smaller than about 0.2 micrometers. Specimen appears against a bright background. Inexpensive and easy to use. To observe various stained specimens and to count microbes does not resolve very small specimens such as viruses. That's the bright field microscope. The dark field uses a special condenser with an opaque, opaque disc that blocks light from entering the objective lens directly. Light reflected by specimen enters the objective lens and the specimen appears light against a black background. It's used to examine living microorganisms that are invisible in bright field micro microscopy. Microscopy? Microscope? Microscope? Mi <laughs> you know what I mean. You, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um. Do not stain easily or are distorted by staining. Frequently used to detect... Trapo Traponema pallidum and the diagnosis of syphilis. <laughs> That's good to know. That's bright field, dark field. They're both a type of light microscope. Okay. Phase contrast. Uses this. Oh, I can see the pixels in the slide. I can see the pixels in the slide. Plushy English is the best version of English. <laughs> Honestly, no. <laughs> so the phase contrast uses a special con a condenser containing an annular ring-shaped diaphragm. The diaphragm allows direct light to pass through the condenser, focusing light on the specimen and, and a diffraction plate and the objective lens. Direct and reflected or diffracted light rays are brought together to produce the image. What? I don't... I... What? Principal uses to facility detailed examination of the internal structures of living spe spe specimens. Oh, bye star! So it uses like a ring-shaped diaphragm 
and then it, it bounces light around? Okay. That's all I gathered. Differential interference contrast. Like phase contrast uses differences in refractive indexes to produce images. Use two beams of light separated by prisms. The specimen appears colored as a result of the prism effect. Oh. Pretty cool. Plushy, can we expect any protozoa girlfriend I smile in the future? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, fluorescence uses an ultraviolet or near ultraviolet source of illumination that causes fluorescent microbes in a specimen to emit light. Okay. This one is cropped? I assume that means we don't have to know? It's just up and cropped, man. The picture's cropped. Um, electron. We have transmission and scanning microscopes. I remember the difference between these. Transmission uses a beam of electrons instead of light. The electrons pass through the specimen because of the shorter wavelength of electrons. Structures smaller than 0.2 micrometers can be resolved. The image produced is two-dimensional. Um, it's used to examine viruses or the internal ultrastructure and thin sections of cell. And then we have the scanning, which uses a beam of electrons instead of light. Electrons are reflected from the specimen because of the shorter wavelength of electron structure smaller than 0.2 micrometers can be resolved. The image produced appears three-dimensional. Uh, it's used to study the surface features of cells and viruses. Yeah. Okay. Scanning, scanned probe, scanning tunneling. Use is a thin metal probe that scans a specimen and produces an image revealing the bumps and depressions of the atoms in the surface of the specimen. Resolving power is much greater than that of an electron microscope. No special preparation required. Uh, provides very detailed views of molecules inside the cell. Whoa. Picture of molecules? They look very blobby. <laughs> My girlfriend multiplied by mitosis ASMR? <laughs> Robert, you always have the wildest ideas. Uh, <laughs> biology girlfriend experiments highly unethical on you, ASMR. <laughs> what? That's insane. That's crazy. Okay, atomic force uses a metal and diamond probe. What the heck? Diamond? Freaking diamond microscope, guys. <laughs> you craft it when you get diamond and stuff. I I was trying to make a Minecraft joke, but I actually play Minecraft a lot. I don't know why I always sound like I don't know anything about Minecraft. Um, uses a metal and diamond probe gently forced down along the surface of the specimen. This is a three-dimensional image. No, spe no special preparation required. Provides images of biological molecules in nearly atomic detail and molecular processes. It's crazy. Atoms? We can see some tiny stuff. I wonder, like, will we ever be able to see, like, really, really, really small stuff? <sighs> That'd be crazy. Oh, man, now we've reached the aseptic technique. Do I have to read this? This is boring. Yeah, this is officially boring. Okay. Oh, it's been linked over quickly. Like three pages and there's like nothing on them. <laughs> Biology girlfriend dissects you, ASMR. Wow! <laughs> we already see the inside of Adams? Really? Crazy.
Okay, let's see. Staining of microbes. Oh, okay, gram staining. <laughs> I need to study this a little better, because for the life of me, I could not get the freaking gram stain right. Holy crap, I tried so many times, and I could never do it right. I don't know what I was doing wrong. Actually, I do. I kind of do. My, my, one of my lab partners told me, like, are you putting, like, the water, like, directly on it? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, don't do that. Put it on, like, the top so it doesn't wash the bacteria away. And I was like, that's what I've been doing. He told me that after, like, I already didn't have another chance, so. <laughs> it's okay. If I'm ever in a situation again where I need to gram stain, I'm going to try to remember that. I cannot, I cannot for the life of me. <laughs> Balshay girlfriend makes you into a cowboy ASMR. <laughs> that would be quite, quite, quite a video. <laughs> Biology girlfriend tide rapes yourself and takes a shower ASMR. What? That's crazy. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> gram positive bacteria are blue, gram negative bacteria are red. Say it louder so that I remember because I can't I always get I always get it confused somehow. Like I know the red ones are the ones that have the thinner peptidoglycan, but I don't remember whether they're positive or negative. Mm. I I positive means they're purple. Purple means that they still retained the uh freaking crystal violet and that means they have thick peptidoglycan that means the, the positive ones are blue purple blue they look they look purple but they're blue apparently they're legally blue the other ones look pink but apparently they're legally red <laughs> so it is everyone i talk to is like your your eyes aren't blue and i'm like it says so on my driver's license, so my eyes are legally blue. <laughs> They're legally blue. <laughs> what did I just join to? You joined to uh, me studying microbiology. Uh, we're not talking about anything weird. <laughs> um. I was talking about my inability to gram stain, and then I forgot what- I went down a rabbit hole, I forgot which one it was. What's your opinion on history, students? I don't know, I don't- I don't really have one. I mean, they're people. People are people. I don't care what you study, you're still a person. That's all I got. <laughs> it would be cool to have an illegal eye color. <laughs> <laughs> just lie about your eye color on your driver's license. <laughs> just walk around with like different color. <laughs> That's crazy. History students aren't people. My mistake. My mistake. <laughs> I'm just. Kidding. I'm pretty sure they're people. Are they not? I don't know. I've never really met one. Um, so, I wrote this down. I've also done it a million times. I defend my right to not be a person. <laughs> They're aliens. They're aliens. So apparently, uh, if they may not be pe maybe some of them are people and some of them aren't. How's <laughs> that? So, you add the crystal violet. Then you rinse it with water. Then you add the Graham's iodine. Then you rinse it with water. Then you decolorize with ethanol. And then you put the saffron in red. And then you rinse it with water. And then you blot it dry with the bibulose paper. I've done that a million times. And yet I can't seem to be able to remember. I think I literally got an exam question wrong because I mistook the date. 
the, the difference between gram positive and gram, ne gram negative. Okay, let's see here. Only plushy watching history uh, students are people. Yeah, we'll go with that. Mycobacterium are acid fast. What does that mean? Difficult to stain with simple stains. Harsher technique needed. The uh, Zeal Nielsen method is used. Mycolic acid responsible. Uh, carbol fun uh, I don't know. Heat, acid, acid alcohol, methylene blue. I don't know. So the heat. acid fast staining. Uh, okay. Negative staining for capsules, India ink, or nigrosin dye. Spread out as thin film. Dye does not penetrate capsule, so capsule is clear against dark background. Okay. End of spore staining. Silicon clostridium. Yay. Flagella staining. Increase thickness of flagella by coating with tannic acid or potassium alum. Show presence and distribution pattern. Flagella only directly seen with no staining using electron microscope. Hey look, it's flagella. Okay, so we have finished that PowerPoint. There's so many PowerPoints. see here gram staining I understand gram staining I don't want to hear about it ever again I need a brain break my brain hurts no seriously my, my head actually hurts Pure cold to resolve me about anxiety. Brain brain. Hydrate. I don't know what that word means. I don't know what that means. Hmm. I'm tired. The many countries the powerhouse of the Fred crew. <laughs> Drink age too well. I don't I don't want to. It shows brighter in here, but no, it's not. I don't like it when it's so dark that my computer hurts my eyes. If only, if only the, these PowerPoints had a dark mode, but I don't. They have to be white. What are professors? He always, he always makes his PowerPoints black. It's nice. Most professors don't white though.
I have two midterms coming up this week. An aerospace exam tomorrow and a physics exam on Thursday. Oh, dang. Good luck. I just have the one. Turn off the screen. Then how am I supposed to study? With no screen? essay due this week? Ah, oh, me too. I forgot about that almost. I had a... I already have submitted like the first draft of it, but yeah, I gotta finish it by Saturday. Good luck in your exam of classes in microbiology lab. <laughs> and she grades everything so hard. Sucks. Federal legislative exam in an hour? Good luck! Happy I finished school at 18? Man, that'd be nice. Nah, I got... I, I got... After this year, I only have one more. So. Past halfway. That's, that's something, you know? stop yawning for the life of me. It's not funny. Mm. <laughs> Finds it funny? <laughs> How could you? I'm just kidding. Oh, and my computer's taking off like an airplane again. Dang computer. It's training to be an airplane. It's gonna make it one day. <laughs> Plus he joins the army to avoid studying ASMR. I mean, I could just drop out of college. I wouldn't have to join the army. <laughs> I, I would not last a day in the army. PC sounds like a jet engine? It it really do. Yeah, I'll try to move my microphone over here. It's kinda of pointing more away. Oh, that that's less loud. <laughs> IRS girlfriend finds out you haven't been paying taxes. Oh no. Not to a fans? Is that how you say it? Well, it's a laptop. I can't really add stuff to it. It's just kind of... It's just a little... It's a little silly. When you finish college in the US? Um... It depends. If you take college, you're typically there for four years. Like, if you try really hard, you could be... If you don't go to college, then you can... Like, you can get a job... Uh, but just high school, right? It's hard though. You, it's it's uh in theory much better to go to college. It really depends on how things play out, but if you go to college, you're typically there for four years. So if you were a freshman at eighteen, that means you'd graduate at what? Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two ish. But. Yeah, associate's degree in two years, bachelor's in four years. Yeah, it really depends. Depends on what you do. You can stay longer, too.
I'll be glad when I graduate and I don't have to take classes anymore, but like, I've never not been in school. Like, it sounds so weird to not have things to do. Like, what would I do? Have a job? Not learn stuff? Like, what? Not being in class is crazy, but if you drop school and switch to work, it's basically the same thing. Maybe. I don't know. I've never not been in school. I don't know. I haven't not been in school since I was like, you know, it's a very small child. That's why I want to do research student forever, hopefully. <laughs> You're still small. What does that got to do with anything? Uh, I should probably continue s judging. <laughs> Isolating pure cultures. Used to isolate and identify pure cultures and tend to spread out bacteria so that only one bacterium is in a particular portion of the nutrient agar. Single bacterium will divide by binary fission and become a colony of bacteria from the same genetic origin. After streaking, uh, there's like a picture and you go like you can't see me but you go like this and then you go like this and then like this and then like this and like that i've done this before a couple times i remember i remember how it took me a minute to figure it out but i, I remember Uh. Same for microbiology lab? Yep, that's what I'm doing. Microbial metabolism. Oh, joy. Love learning about freaking metabolism. Full screen, make it big. Has <laughs> can't talk. Metabolism is total of all chemical reactions occurring in the cell. Composed of anabolism, which is production, and catabolism, which is breakdown. Um, aer aerobic respiration uses oxygen as final electron acceptor. Anaerobic respiration has different exoge exogenous final acceptor, such as nitrate, sulfate, carbon dioxide, ferric ion. Fermentation uses no exo exogenous electron acceptors. Usually a pathway intermediate is the electron acceptor. Energy made in all. Mm. So there's the glycolysis and the Krebs citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain. Glycolysis. The glucose to pyruvate. She said that wasn't that important.
Blah, blah, blah. Okay, fermentation. This is more. She said this is more important. Lactic acid fermentation regenerates NADH. NADH. Yeah, what's it? Mm -hmm. It makes lactic acid. Lactic acid. NADH. Is that? Can't remember. Um. It's a role in generating energy. Okay, it generates energy. Thank you, Google. <laughs> okay. Lactic acid, bacteria, lactobacillus. Ethanol fermentation regenerates NADH and makes ethanol and carbon dioxide and yeast. So then we have this one. So Streptococcus. Lactobacillus and bacillus, uh, the fermentation end product is lactic acid for the Saccharomyces, which is yeast, it's ethanol and carbon dioxide for the pro, a plon, pro, is that an I or, that's an I, oh, pixels, I can see the pixels in this picture. Propionic bacterium uh, makes propionic acid, uh, acetic acid, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen ion. And not ions. No, it's not the ion. It's not the ion. My bad. I don't know why I said ion. Clostridium makes butyric acid, butanol, acetone, isopropyl alcohol. And CO2, Escherichia, and Salmonella make ethanol, lactic acid, zucanic acid, acetic acid, CO2, and hydrogen, Enterobacter, it's ethanol, lactic acid, formic acid, butan butanidol, acetoin, CO2, and H2O. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Fleshies confirmed Jigglypuff? Oh no! I'm Jigglypuff. Hmm. Okay. She said that was mostly to be known like, uh... Uh, comparison to the microbio, like, uh, what are they called? The tests. I forget what they're called. Uh, I said this in the last stream, but I noticed if it gets to the point where I just, I just out of it and I can't think anymore, that means I'll actually remember it pretty well tomorrow. I don't know why that is the way it is. If my brain is hurting and I I I can't talk anymore, that's a good sign <laughs> that I'm retaining a lot of information. <laughs> I don't know why it works that way, but it does. Uh, okay. The brain is a weird creature. You say that like it's separate. <laughs> um, anabolism, production of carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, and photosynthesis. Too much information, man. Oh. 
just gonna skip over it quickly because she didn't really talk about it that much so I assume it's not that important because that's the way that works Biochemical media procedure. Okay. This I understand. I wrote a thing somewhere, but I'm gonna pull it up. For a thing. I made a lot of notes in a book that's not here. I think I got everything from the PowerPoint though, so we should be good. My brain is a separate entity that only cooperates with my stomach. <laughs> Honestly. Okay, let's see here. Plates for the EMB plate and the blood agar plate. Mm. Tube to media slant, streak slant. So for the Simon citrate, do the streak slant. The Simon citrate. It's blue if it's positive and it's green if it's negative. So it's because, okay. If the bacteria is positive, that means that it can use carb uh, citrate as a carbon source. Um, Terra bacter test positive and Simon citrate. So, what's that? Concentrate TSI. That's the one you stab. Um, that one. Remember, it turns. I think yeah, this is the one that turns black for Proteus. I forget why. Uh, cause I I never had Proteus. I had Interobacter. Hold on, my mom's texting me. Yes. Every time I type yes, I end up with Y E A. And I can't, I, I can't, bro. What's the accent that I'm randomly putting in? I can't, like, freaking. I can't, like, freaking. What's it called? I can't, I can't get autocorrect to make me say yes because it always puts, yeah, but without a Y. Flushing mom? Yes, it might surprise you, but I have a mother. Um, I didn't just appear one day. Y you know where people come from. <laughs> um, yeah, it's black or proteus, but... I think for both E. coli and the Enterobacter, um, there's like air bubbles formed, and that's because of something. Oh, I'm too tired. Oh, I, uh, I don't want to stop Is your mom single? No. What? No, she's married to my dad. I thought you were from my toes. Is your dad single? <laughs> my dad's married to my mom. 
<laughs> They're married to each other. Gas production. Okay, I wrote it down. TSI tests for gas production from fermentation of glucose, sucrose, or lactose. Glucose, sucrose, or lactose. Could be any of them. It's a TSI. The motility. I forgot to do. No, I didn't. I I did do the motility. Basically checks if they can, if they can like move. Triptome block, that's the one I forget. I forgot. Well, they wrote like three times in this report. I forgot to do this. If the bacteria contained indole, the top would be red. If not, it would remain yellow. E. coli contains indole and tests red. Both protease and hair bacteria do not and test negative. Okay. Yay, biochems. We love the biochems. I kind of understand them because they had to do them twice. They had to write a report about them. Blood agar plates, uh, along with most bacteria. The E of B contains lactose as the only sugar. So it, differenti it differentiates between lactose fermenters and non-fermenters. Uh, for some reason E. coli is green. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. All the other positives are purple, and then it's clear if it's negative. So the E and B plate selects for gram-negative bacteria, because the eosin inhibits gram-positive. Oh, that's cool. I actually didn't know that. Endol, salmon citrate. Mm. TSI. Why is it black? And does it say? Um. Iron reacts with H2S, hydrogen sulfur. Add form iron sulfate, black precipitate. So it turns black because of iron. Interesting. So Proteus has iron. Is that why it turns black? I don't know. For, what, so for some reason, it turns black for Proteus. Urea test. I put that in here, right? Test for person of urease, I think. Um, it's positive. It's purple. If it's negative, it's yellow. And Terabacter has a slow positive. Until the agar. Do you want two dollars? I mean, I don't not want two dollars, but I'm not going to. I don't. I don't ask people for money. They can give it to me, but I won't ask. I might advertise my stuff, but I'm not, like, making you buy it. Mm. 
Mine is actually black in color, so it makes sense. Yeah. What's this? You didn't answer the question. I didn't answer the question. Didn't I? Don't sell a kidney. I, I don't need that much money. Man, I don't I don't need money. <laughs> I don't need money. I just need I just need a nap, honestly. Beneficial microbes. How long is this one? Twenty-four? Yeah. Is this the one about cheese? Yeah, this is the one about cheese. <laughs> Why? She goes so in depth on like the production of cheese and I'm like Who freaking cares? Did y'all know that they used bacteria to make cheese? Oh my gosh, thank you for the two dollars! Drinking water right now? What? Are you trying to make me drink water by saying that? Cheese is very important. <laughs> they also use bacteria to make beer? It might say something about that in here. It's not right here. We start with fermented milk. Acid produced by microbial activity causes uh, protein dehydration, uh, ino inoculate milk with starter culture, lactobacillus and lactococcus lactis to give a Roman flavor. Lactococcus, lactococcus. That makes sense because it, it's, it's, it's milk. Milk is lactose. Lactococcus. Caucus, it just means it's a spherical shape. It's a cockeye shape. Okay. Um, incubate at optimum temperatures. Holds microbial growth by cooling. Lactococcus lactis. Uh, sub sp 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 Diacetylactis. Ugh. Convert citrate and milk to diacetyl, which gives buttery flavor. Add it to skim milk, it gives cultured buttermilk. Add to cream, it gives sour cream. That's how you get sour cream, everybody. I'm off to my exam. Good luck with your study. Good luck with your exam! We're gonna commit crimes, get money to plushie? Don't, don't, don't do that. It's a bad idea. <laughs> I don't, I don't need, I don't need your money. Plushie started her mafia? Man, I'm just trying to study. I didn't mean to accidentally start a mafia. <laughs> Well, she's saying not to. She can claim plausible deniability. Very smart. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> okay, yogurt. Start a culture of 1 1 ratio of Streptococcus thermophilus and Lactobacillus. So. Yogurt and starter culture of Streptococcus and Lactobacillus. Freshly prepared yogurt contains uh, 
109 bacteria per gram. There you go, guys. The freshly prepared yogurt contains 109 bacteria per gram. When you eat yogurt, you eat bacteria. <laughs> the good kind. Uh, cheese. Okay. Let's let the rest of this PowerPoint just about cheese. So much about cheese. Two hundred distinct varieties with two general types. It's a lot of different types of cheese. That's crazy. Made by lactic acid fermentation in milk, acid coagulates milk, proteins and formation of curd, renin by genetically engineered microbes may be used for curd formation. Curd is formed, heated, impressed, salted, and ripened. Curd may be inoculated with additional microbes. Penicillium roquefort... Roca Penicillium roqueforti spores added to uh, roquefort or blue cheese. Roquefort? I don't remember how to pronounce it. Um, Penicillium cam camemberti spores added to camembert. Okay, I see. Penicillium, whatever the cheese is, it would seem. <laughs> Ripening gives final hardness to cheese. Soft 1 to 5 months, hard 3 to 12 months. Fermentation by propionary bacterium releases carbon dioxide to give flavor development in whole and eye formation. The curd is a solid... Uh, word is that? Oh, something. From lactic acid, bacteria, and renin. Why, way, not why, way. <clears throat> way is a liquid separated from curd. Hard cheeses produced by lactic acid bacteria. Semi soft cheeses ripened by penicillium on the surface. Penicillium roqueforti provides blue veins and flavor. Swiss cheese holes due to carbon dioxide production by. Propionibacterium. bacterium. Cottage cheese, cream cheese, ripening of cheese with penicillium cam uh, camberti or brevio brevi bacterium linens. See there the Bray or the Limburger. Meat. Okay. Wow, there wasn't as much about cheese as I thought. We're already done with cheese. Meat. Cured ham, salami, summer sausage, periococcus, cerevisiae, no seriously, it's C-E-R-E-V-I-S-I-S-I-A-E. <laughs> Thank you so much for the two dollars. Here's my cookie money for tomorrow. Oh, thank you! Thank you, thank you! Uh, okay. And thank you! It's, YouTube tells me it's your the first super on a live stream. So thank you. Um, uses yeast to undergo alcohol. Oh, bread. Sorry, this is bread. Uses yeast to undergo alcohol fermentation. Products of carbon dioxide to rise. Carbon dioxide. What am I saying? Carbon dioxide to rise in ethanol. Bake off. Baker's yeast has enzymes maltase and bertase enzymase. Stringy or ropey bread occurs if bacillus species have grown in bread while rising. Sourdough bread has an acid taste due to lactobacillus species. There you go, there's bacteria in bread too. They're everywhere. <laughs> um Sugar Um Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Make sugar into et ethyl alcohol and CO2. Malic acid 
um, lactic acid bacteria take malic acid and make it lactic acid. Acetobacter or gluconobacter take ethyl alcohol and make it acetic acid. Cabbage. Mushrooms. It's mm. a lot of tables and tables just kind of hard. Isn't yeast a mushroom? Um, I think it's. If I understand it correctly, it's a fungus. I don't think it's a mushroom, but mushrooms are also fungus fungi. I'm scared of mushrooms. What do mushrooms do to you? technology. Bro, this thing looks scary. Holy crap. This makes food? Looks like it makes weapons. Maybe you guys have just corrupted my brain. PowerPoint is done. What's this? Oh, this is like... This is about... It's like a paper. Why is it got dialogue? This looks like a freaking story. Okay. I'm gonna read this. Uh, let's see here. I just don't think I'm learning anything. Henry, one of the medical students I advised, had shown up for a weekly meeting full of complaints. He was a third year student just beginning his in-hospital training. For the three months of his internal med med medicine clerkship, he would be spending most of his time on one particular medical ward, helping the house staff care for its patients, reading about the patient's diagnoses, diag diagnoses and becoming acquainted with hospital life. Once a week, he and three other students would spend a few hours talking with me, about patients, the ward routine, or anything else on their minds. Most students find, this th find their third year, if anything, too full of new things to learn. But on that March day, Henry was bored and gloomy. He had been an emergency medical technician before he went to medical school, and he knew more basic medicine than most of his classmates. His particular love was the push and intensity of medical emergencies, but, unfortunately, he had been assigned to spend his clerkship in a relatively slow-paced geriatric ward. Pneumonia and pressure sores. That's all I'm seeing, Henry grumbled. I thought I'd get to see cardiac, uh, right? I don't know how to say that. I don't know what he's saying, but he, he wants to see cooler stuff. Instead, I'm learning about constipation. At this point, I was seized with an inspiration. Instead of delivering key points for my standard lecture on medical education, you'd be surprised what patients you wind up learning the most from. I decided to keep quiet and let Henry and the other students learn that lesson from a patient instead. Well, I said, I suppose I make sure you learn something this afternoon. Suppose I take you to see a lady with one of the most untreatable annex inexorable, devastating, infectious diseases known. Cool, Henry replied. <laughs> Bro really said cool. I am a member of a team of infectious disease specialists that have been called to see Mrs. Nelson the week before. 
We were keeping a close eye on her, and I knew she wouldn't mind a visit from Henry and his classmates. Is that my brother back there? As I led the students into Mrs. Nelson's room, they were unusually silent, and it was all I could do not to smile just a little. I knew that they were bracing themselves for something really gruesome. And sure enough, when they saw Mrs. Nelson, they could barely conceal their confusion. She had no fever, no sores, or pustules, or boils, no swollen, uh, gangrenous arms or legs, no exotic, m malodorous rash, no signposts on the door, caution, gloves, gown, and mask who cried for entry. She was a plump, middle-aged woman sitting on a chair by her bed, crocheting and chatting with her roommates. And the only sign of anything amiss was a bit of gauze packing dangling from her right nostril. She smiled at the students smiled at me and said she was feeling fine, rolled up her half-finished tablecloth, prepared to answer her questions. I caught the students shrugging at each other. Henry looked particularly disappointed, but I knew that after he had finished talking to Mrs. Nelson and had read about her infection in his textbooks, he would never forget her. The sight of her, neat in her hospital gown and busily crocheting her tablecloth, would stay with him long after most other images of his training had vanished from his mind. As Mrs. Nelson told the students, it had started with a headache. Not a bad headache, she emphasized. Just a little headache. Just right behind the right eye. It went away with two Tylenol, and then it came back. And then it came right back. A few days after the headache started, Mrs. Nelson had a terrible asthma attack and had been admitted to the hospital. Did you tell them about her headache in the hospital? I think I forgot. She was in the hospital for a few days. While her asthma was brought under control, her doctors noticed that her blood sugar was a little high and increased the dose of her diabetes pills to control it. Then she went home. With a headache? One student asked. With a headache, she answered. At home, the headache got worse. She went to the emergency room one evening and got some stronger painkillers, but they didn't work for long. Finally, about a week later, she went back to the emergency room. Head was throbbing and the right side of her face seemed a little swollen. Blood tests taken that, that evening showed that her blood sugar levels was five times higher than normal. An ear, nose, and throat resident was called in to look at her and agreed that she probably had um, sin sinusitis, an inflammation of the air passage in the skull. She was admitted to the hospital. N not until a senior attending ENT surgeon saw her the next morning did anyone realize how sick Mrs. Nelson might really be. The surgeon realized that Mrs. Nelson might have, um, mucormomycosis, um, a fungal infection of the sinuses. The group of fungi that cause uh, mucor are common omnipresent organisms, and they cause some kinds of food mold, for instance. Most people breathe tiny fragments of these fungi in and out all the time, with no problem at all. Even if the fungal particles are not exhaled but settle in the person's nose or sinuses or bronchial tubes or lung tissue, the body disposes, usually disposes of them effortlessly. An, Im an, an immunologically normal people, white blood cells race to die particles, surround them, ingest them, and destroy them with, their, with powerful enzymes. But sometimes these mechanisms fail. The fungi that cause mycor have one sinister biological peculiarity. They love warm, sugary environments. The tissues of people with diabetes, particularly if the diabetes is out of control and the sugar content of the blood is substantially higher than normal, can be paradise for mucor organisms. Most diabetes patients fend off the infection, but in rare cases the fungus takes hold. In the lungs, nasal passages, and sinuses of these unlucky people, microorganisms can flourish like lush tropical plants, outstripping the immune system's ability to con contain them. They can grow through the lungs into the heart, through the nasal passages into the sinuses, the face, the skull, and slowly and inexorably the brain, cutting off blood supply as they grow and destroy every tissue in their wake. When the attending ENT surgeon realizes realized Mrs. Nelson might have mucor, he acted quickly. He was immediately- she was immediately- sorry. <laughs> she was immediately taken to the operating room so surgeons could drain her right maxillary sinus, the big sinus right next- right next to him behind the nose. 
Cultures and biopsy specimens showed that, sure enough, the sinus was infiltrated with one of the fungi that causes mucor, and our infectious disease service was immediately notified. The surgeons knew that they desperately needed our help. Mu mucor used to be a 1% fatal. One, sorry, 100% fatal. Now modern surgical techniques and antifungal drugs have reduced its motility rate somewhat. But in most studies, between 30 and 80% of people with mucor still die of the infection. This makes it deadlier than tuberculosis, cholera, and bubonic plague, which are easily treated if infection is detected early on. The irony is that, unlike these infectious scourges, mucor is caused by an organism that is ordinarily not dangerous to human beings. Among certain patients, however, diabetes, diabetics, burn victims, or others with weakened immune systems, m mucor can k turn into a killer. Fortunately, mucor infection is exceedingly rare. Although millions of people have diabetes, there have been fewer than 600 reported cases of mucor mycosis. What makes these small number of patients so vulnerable isn't clearly understood, but anything that interferes with the body's defenses against infection could increase their risk. Mrs. Nelson may ha have become even more vulnerable because the steroids that controlled her asthma also impaired her body's immune response. When mucor is suspected, a patient becomes a medical emergency no matter how well he or she looks. We knew Mrs. Nelson probably had no better than a 50-50 chance of surviving to eat off the tablecloth she'd started crocheting as soon as we told her she would be in the hospital for a long time. We immediately began treating her with huge doses of amphotericin B, one of the most powerful antifungal drugs. We gave her carefully adjusted insulin shots to make sure that her blood sugar remained as close to normal as possible. We planned to perform frequent CT scans of her sinuses to, motor to monitor the progress of the infection. And the ENT surgeons knew they would probably have to take her back to the operating room frequently to clean out disease tissue from her sinuses. We told Mrs. Nelson over and over, as gently as possible, how serious her condition was and how important it was for her to cooperate with our plan. They say I must stay here for a long time, she said, finishing up her story for the students, but I don't know. I think I'll beat this thing. She grinned and shrugged at them and went back to her crocheting. We all filed out of the room. Out of out in the corridor, Henry shot me a dirty look. S sinus sinusitis, he said. What is the big deal about a little old lady with sinus sinusitis? I told him to go home and do a little reading before he said anything else. <laughs> when I went to check on Mrs. Nelson the next morning, I wasn't altogether surprised to find Henry sitting at the nurse's station, looking through her chart. As I had expected, he had spent the previous evening reading about mucor and wanted to find out more of the details of her case. I knew he was fascinated by medical emergencies, and I had anticipated that even one as slow-moving as this would capture his interest. What surprised me was that, as the weeks passed, I kept finding Henry on M Mrs. Nelson's, M Nelson's board. Occasionally, he would be reading through her chart. Often, he'd be talking to her or her family. He was with her the day after... A se uh, he was there. He was with her the day after a second big operation on her sinuses in April, and when we had to tell her that frag fragments of the fungus could still be found in the bones surrounding her sinuses, this meant she needed even more amphotericin B, more CT scans, and operations. As always, she smiled and said, "Anything that you think is necessary, I will do." But this time, her smile was a little less ready. Her right eye had begun to droop a little, and a sore was developed on her right cheek. Three weeks later, she lost most of the function to her right eye when the fungus grew through one of the nerves that controlled its movements. At the end of May, Henry finished his medical clerkship and moved off to study pediatrics at a nearby hospital. He came back every once in a while to check on Mrs. Nelson. When he found out that she had had a seizure at the end of May, my evidence of fungal infection had been found in her brain. He came by my office. It's unbelievable, he said. That, fun that fungus is going to win. Sadly, I had to agree with him. Mrs. Nelson had by this point had so much amphotericin B that her kidneys were beginning to fail. 
We had started her on an experimental drug that would be less toxic to the kidneys, but it seemed just as powerless against mucor, which now began to march into her brain as relentlessly as a panzer tank. Panzer tank? Is that it? <laughs> no. Another CT scan showed increased damage to the right side of her brain. Her diabetes became harder and harder to control. She stopped crocheting, stopped smiling, and lapsed into a coma. Finally, we had to tell our devastated family that there's simply nothing we could do. Mrs. Nelson died in July. I ran into Henry in the hospital coffee shop later the same week. I just went up to see her, but there was m there was mo ah, there was mother patient in her bed. What? Another patient? You said. I guess I wasn't really surprised. I never saw anything like it. I never imagined things like that happened outside the movies. I can't believe that when I met her, she was just a little old lady with s sinusitis. I'll, I'll never forget her. I could have told him so, but I was glad he had figured it out for himself. Sad. Oh, my phone gone there. Uh, my phone charging? What? It's not. Is this cord not plugged in somewhere? Mm, my phone's gonna die. My phone's gonna die. What? Let me figure out why this isn't working. Oh, this is the wrong cord. This cord works, right? Yeah, okay, there we go. Short battery life like your height, bruh. <laughs> I wouldn't call it short, it's left for a while. Uh, fungi. Fungi eukaryotes. Mycology is a study of fungi. About 90,000 species of fungi grow best in moist, dark habitats. Cell walls of chitin or other polysaccharide, non photosynthetic absorptive heterotrophs, hypha or thread like structures, filaments, mycelium mass of hyphae, the mycelium expands and feeds, hyphae secrete enzymes that break down complex molecules which are then absorbed. Hyphae grow large, a single fungus in Michigan covers 40 acres and weighs over 10 tons. The freak, that is a... That... that that's, that's ginormous. Rock and stone. <laughs> Not the freaking... Oh wait, what's that game called again? Deep Rock Galactic? <laughs> Septa divide hyphae into cell like units. Okay. Uh, adapted to environment that is hostile to bacteria, chemoheterotrophs. Many are uh, saprophytes, uh, getting nutrients from dead organic material, absorb nutrients from environment, grow better at pH of about five. Molds are aerobic, yeasts are fa facultative, facultative, anaerobes. More resistant to osmotic pressure compared to bacteria, can grow in higher sugar or salt, can grow with very low moisture content, um, can metabolize complex carbohydrates. They're uni yeasts are unicellular, they're spherical, ellipsoidal, oval, five to ten times larger than bacteria, Reproduce asexually by budding. Preferred media, uh, saborads dectrose agar, which was which has low pH. Candida albicans. 
Saccharomyces cerevisiae, vicise, baker's yeast, brewer's yeast, fermentation yields alcohol and carbon dioxide. Don't sell a kidney to drop 50 membership gifts. <laughs> you need those. You only have two. I mean, I'm assuming you have two. <laughs> I only need one? You have two for a reason. Molds are multicellular and filamentous. Asexual spores are canidia or sp sporoangiospores. Um, <laughs> sexual spores. Um, Visipus zygospores, penicillium or asparagillus ascospores. Mushrooms are shelf fungi basidiospores. <laughs> What's spores? Uh, spores! It's November! <laughs> I'm talking about fungi! <laughs> Come on! Vegetative hyphae obtain nutrients. Aerial hyphae are connected with reproduction and often bear spores. Bows. Asexual spores. Um, reduce mitosis and cell division in single organism. No fusion of cell nuclei. Spores become organisms genetically identical to parent. That's how asexual reproduction works. And then the other ones. Um, the not asexual ones. <laughs> From fusion of nuclei from two opposite mating strains of same species of fungi, fusion of hyphae of different mating strains, fungi produce <coughs> uh, <laughs> spores less often. Resulting fungus have genetic characteristics of both parental strains called zygospores, ascospores, basidiospores. You saw me vent! Oh, crap! Fungi is classified based on its reproductive mechanisms. Div division zygomycota is the rhizopus. Division ascomycota is the sac fungi. Division basidiomycota is the club fungi and mushrooms. Division deuterom deuter deuterom deuteromy mycota fungi and perfecta penicillium asparagillus. Division shytridoium mycota. Yeah. And the sporangiospores and the zygospores. Penicillium. Yay. Asparagillus. The cycles, I don't think I need to know that. Uh, yeah, and disgusting pictures of fungal disease. I don't want to see that! I don't want to see that! That's gross! Uh, I don't want to see pictures of fungal infections, bro. Two types, superficial and systemic. Superficial... Dermatophytes, Tinea capitis, ringworm, or Candidiasis, thrush. Systemic yeast infection of abdominal cavity, mycor infection of sinuses and brain. Ah, oh, yucky. I don't want to see that. That's gross. Life is gross? I know!
Lichens are a result of mutualistic symbiosis between fungus and green algae. The fungus provides nutrients to the algae by secreting organic acids to weather rock and the algae feeding the uh, fungus through photosynthesis. They are good indicators of air pollution pollutions due to their sensitivity to sulfur dioxide. Lichens. They grow on trees. They're little green things that grow on trees. Little green, like, flicky things. Mycorrhizae. Symbiotic relationship between fungus and plant root. They send service areas so plant can absorb more nutrients, especially uh, phosphorus. Uh, increases the growth of plant. Fungi are nice to plants. Anyone played Mario Wonderland or whatever? I have played it some. It was, it was fun. Hey guys, what do fungi do on YouTube? They like and subscribe. <laughs> That's funny. It's not really, but <laughs> I find everything funny, so. Let's see here. Parasitology. Parasitology is the study of macroparasites, including protozoa and helminths, of eukaryotic parasites. Protozoan parasites, classified by their type of motility and life cycle, reproduction occurs via the uh, trophozoite. Trophozoite? What's it? I don't know what that means. Survival outside the host occurs in the cyst stage, classified by uh, amoeba, ciliate, phlegate. Flagellate and epic complexin groups. We gotta take a test on all this two days from now. On. <laughs> I'm dead. Um, unicellular eukaryotic chem chemo heterotrophs feeds on bacteria. The trophozoite stage. Reproduces asexually by fission, budding, uh, schizo -jon Multiple fission. Reproduce, uh, the other way by conjugation or with the haploid gametes. Some can form cysts to provide protection in adverse conditions. Whoa, pictures. This is a... Chylomastix? Is that Trichomonas? Is this a Gaiardi? Is this a Gaiardialembilia? I gotta know this stuff, man. I don't know how I'm supposed to know. Etamoeb. <sighs> Antenovia. Histolytica. Most significant protozoa affects 500 million people in the trop in the tropics, causes an am amoebic dysentery. Transmission through contaminated food and water. Pseudopods for movement and engulfing food. Ingestion of red blood cells is diagno diagnostic for entomoebia. I don't know what I'm saying. Balintidium coli. Largest protozoan pathogen only ciliate to infect humans transmitted by contact with pigs or contaminated water. Trichomonas vaginalis. Flagellated protozoan causes an STD. Trichomonas. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. Trichomoniasis. Spread by direct contact. 
Gallardia Lamblia. Flagellated protozoan, unique heart shape, and four flagella causes Gallardia. I can't say these words. There's so many eyes. Why are there so many eyes? Non invasive intestinal infection. What do you mean a non invasive intestinal infection? You're gonna invade my intestines non invasively? That's cap. A trypanosoma brucei gambio bayens. How am I supposed to say this crap? Hold on. I don't know how to say this. You won't invade your privacy. <laughs> Yeah, it's just gonna chill in my body and not invade my privacy. Yeah. <laughs> Intestinal infection respects personal space. <laughs> Hemophlegulate lives in the blood, causes African sleeping sickness, chronic strain. Mm, I don't know. Is a mosquito? No, it's a fly. Okay. Uh, Trypanosoma cruzi. Causes Chagas' disease. How am I supposed to remember all this? Like, I'm supposed to know. Eh, I don't know. I'll worry about that tomorrow. We need you to shower? No, I don't want to shower. Causes Chagas' disease. Red, uh, Reduvike bug. Kissing bug vector. Kissing bug. Damages the heart. American trypanosomiasis. Look at that. Alish mania. No, that's not right. I don't know what. I don't know what it is. Cooties? <laughs> yes, yes, cooties. <laughs> Sandfly vector transmitted through a human body by micro macrophages. Not to be confused with micro. I don't even know if those are the thing. Arrows point to am am mastigotes? Mastigotes. What the heck? I don't want to see pictures of your infections. It's disgusting. Plasmodium, a causative agent of malaria. Apico, complexin, female anopheles, mosquito vector, three hundred to five hundred million cases estimated worldwide. Malaria is crazy. Oh my gosh, malaria in the United States. Toxoplasma gondi, humans are an accidental host, can affect transplacently and result in fatal results. Epicomplexin, cats are the primary host, transmitted by ingestion of pseudocytes. Not my cat's getting me sick, that's crazy. Legitimate question, has anyone caught cooties before? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't, but that's just me. Trans uh, cry cryptosporidium. Transmitted by ingestion of infected water or infected feces, causes a chronic wasting disease and AIDS and can be fatal. That's fun. Okay, yay, I finished the PowerPoint. I'm allergic to cats except the ones in the house. How does that work? Welcome back! I don't want to. Oh, wait, did I finish everything? Guys, I made it through everything! 
I actually did. Holy crap, I did it. <laughs> Yay! It only took me two and a half hours. Uh, I should probably go over again later, but first I need like... I don't know, maybe I won't take a shower. I don't know, I, I need to. I was going to take one yesterday and I just never got around to it. I'm going to shower, I just don't know when. I'm going to eventually, like, I'm not gonna, like, I'm not gonna, like, die without having showered or something. I will shower eventually, you know? Shower update when you do? Okay, okay. <sighs> oh, my head hurts, but that's okay. That means I put a lot of information in it. That's what that means. That's yeah, that's that's what that means. I've decided that's what that means. It actually kind of does. If you put too much information into your brain, it will hurt. At least mine does. I don't know about yours. Because you didn't shower. I don't think that's why. <laughs> Drink water? I don't... <laughs> why? Why? I don't want to drink water shower. That sounds... That sounds boring. Change socks! What? <laughs> How did you know? Oh, I always thought STEM majors were famous for their ability to not shower for days. In your room? I just cleaned my room. Actually, my sister cleaned it for me. <laughs> my sister cleaned my room for me. I mean, we shared the room. It's not just mine. It was prob It was my mess, but she cleaned it, so... <laughs> Perks of sharing your room with someone who compulsively cleans things. As you get your stuff cleaned sometimes. Unpaid labor? <laughs> Clean your browser history. What? What do you think my browser history says? What does it say? Wait, how do I even... <laughs> how, I don't even know how to look, honestly. I promise I, I I didn't search anything weird. I don't. Honestly.
Hello, I'm back. <laughs> My brother randomly came home, you know. I cannot get any freaking privacy in this house. <laughs> Sorry. I cannot do the streams without being interrupted, it would seem. He's not here anymore. He's gone. Some our YouTube channel. Yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> Plus, she was drafted into Santa's workshop. Okay, that's it's crazy. Is your brother single? No, actually, he has a girlfriend. He's also a minor. <laughs> I don't know why I mentioned that second, but hey, <laughs> he does have a girlfriend, I'm not wrong. Tired. Here, can I? Why can I send super chats to myself? Can I really? Oh my gosh, I can. I can send super chats to myself, which would be dumb because YouTube would tax me. But <laughs> I, I lose money. You gotta spend money to lose money? I think there are other ways to lose money. You can accidentally, like, lose your cash. It's like drag cleaners filled with their own clothes to look busy. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. your self-interest. <laughs> Man. This was fun? This was fun indeed. It's it's always it's always nice for me to I, I, I say that. This is like the second time I've done this. It's always nice for me to do something like this. So then I'm forced to like I can't not, right? <laughs> I can't not. If I say I'm streaming something I have to do it. Like I'm being held accountable. Whereas if I'm alone, there's no one to be like, you should be studying. I'm like, no. It's like in the title, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I have four unanswered calls. Oh no. That's, that's not, that's a lot of calls. Thirty-two unread messages. Crazy. I have like five unanswered calls from my dog. My the doctor's assistant keeps calling me, and when I'm driving or when I'm in class, and whenever I get home to call her back, I get her voicemail. Like, we keep getting each other's voicemails. I swear, I'm never going to be able to be, like, on the same call with this person. Like, holy crap. Huh. Crazy.
I'm tired. I don't know. I don't want to end the stream just yet. Like, uh, I don't know what else I'm gonna say. What else? Wait, what else am I gonna say? I don't know. How was your weekend video ideas on your mind? I... My weekend was... Well, I went to work. <laughs> That's my weekend. Oh, my mom came home today! My mom came home. She'd been gone. She... <laughs> she went to get the milk. <laughs> no, but she'd been gone. She was gone for a week, and then she was back for a week, and then she was gone for a week again. Now she's back again. Um... Because, like, her her parents have been having problems, so she's been going, uh, they live pretty far away, so she's been taking an airplane up there. But she came back, she was back, like, I came home, like, she wasn't there when I left to, for class this morning, but I came back and she was there. That was cool. Video ideas? Video ideas. I have them, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I wanna- I- I wanna make another one with Goth Girlfriend. I feel like it's been too long since I used Goth Girlfriend. But... That's- that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Boot up Deep- Deep Rock Galactic? On this old thing? This- this thing? <laughs> the stream would crash. <laughs> Mental health check, Plushie, how are you doing? I'm... I'm doing... Last week, I lived, I think I was sick. I'm not sure, but I had like a headache for a week straight. <laughs> On and off constantly. And I felt like... I felt like a piece of crap. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, you're just like... Ugh. That was last week. And I've been feeling better this week. But like, I was so stressed. Ah! There we go. That's a little better. <laughs> I, I'm stressed. Stressed, stressed, stressed. Hopefully, after this week, things will be easier. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> I If I make it... Finals week is never that bad because, like, there's no classes for me. But, like, the weeks leading up to it... Ugh! It's pain! <laughs> Screaming BC <busy>, plushy. <laughs> oh, yeah. What? Why did you clip me screaming? I gotta, yeah, I gotta keep going. I'll make it. I'll survive the semester. I survive every semester. I just gotta, I just gotta keep going. <sighs> We're good. <laughs> Screaming in pain and agony is <laughs> I don't want to scream too much. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I've streamed... Like, I've had other YouTube accounts before. My parents are used to me randomly... Like, my family members are used to me randomly yelling about stuff. I'd be kind of doomed if I... If I wasn't... If I hadn't made, like, other YouTube, I'd probably be screwed. Because I'd be like... You, like... Like, making a YouTube video? Like, sh streaming or something? I'm like, uh... Uh... But I can be like, yeah, you know, for that, that other channel. 
definitely not making girlfriend content. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just kind of, you know, it's a bit weird. Karaoke BC. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I've been wanting to do like something streaming. I'd probably do, if I was going to do karaoke, I think I'd rather do it in like a more like stream format than in like ASMR one. But, I'll see. No, the aglet came off of my shirt. My, like, I have like shoelaces on my shirt. They're like, it's like a hoodie string. But it's like a shoelace. Like the, it's like you got metal. The word is aglet. I learned that from freaking Phineas and Ferb. She knows about the aglet. Yes, the aglet. That episode was funny. <laughs> that was a good one. She's cultured. I'm cultured in some ways, in some ways I'm not. It's weird. <laughs> like sometimes I say something, people are like, oh my gosh, yes, based. And sometimes I'm like, this other thing, people are like, what the heck? <laughs> It's weird. I am. It, it, it is weird. <sighs> I'm, tired. I'm just gonna wait until my parents call for dinner. That's what I'm gonna do. And then after dinner, I'm gonna. I got some stuff I have to read. I have to take a shower. I don't want to take a shower. Chat, I don't want to take a shower. Showers? I don't like them. I don't like them. I don't like them. Yeah, I'm done with studying for now. <laughs> Shy girlfriend calls you based. <laughs> You must shower, it's the only way. What do you mean? It's good stress relief? I don't know. Is it? I don't shower that often, I don't know. I should need to wash clothes. I haven't I haven't washed clothes since like I, you know what, I'm not gonna say it. It's really it's it's really bad. I don't wash things, man. And, and don't even get me started on my bed. That thing is filthy. <laughs> that thing is filthy. <laughs> Just going back to your culture and laundry. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. It's for my it's for my microbiology class, you know. Someday someone's going to ask me what I'm listening to while working out, and they have to stand there in complete terror. They say, "Nerdy girlfriend hates them." <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I always wonder what my sister thinks. Well, like you know, I share a room with my sister, <laughs> and I always wonder what she thinks if I'm like wearing headphones to sleep and I'm randomly like giggling <laughs> about something. I can't help it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just. <laughs> Sometimes I just have to. You're just over there, like. <laughs> I'm just like, what the heck? She is the dwarf confirmed her bed and clothes are covered in soot and gold dust. She refuses to shower. <laughs> Am I an elf or a dwarf? I, I keep hearing both of them. <laughs> I 
I mean, you could just lie about what you're listening to. <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> I'm... I'm a compulsive liar. <laughs> I lie when there's no need. Like, I remember this one time, I was... I was... At, like, I was at dinner with my family, and I was talking to my brother, my little brother, and we were talking about, like, freaking, we were talking about tortillas. And my, and my sister looks over and she's like, what are you talking about? And I just went, nothing! <laughs> I just went in the most guilty voice out there, nothing! Like, nothing! <laughs> and I don't know why, and we were talking about tortillas! We were talking about food! My guilty conscience was like, I, I'm not doing anything weird. I, 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 I don't do weird things. I don't. I'm, I'm normal. <laughs> oh man! You feed your partner finds out you have a YouTuber and ask what you're doing. Just like, oh, I make lonely people happy. No, that'd be crazy. You normally you don't shower? Okay. Okay. But nobody in my family showers. I'm i I'm convinced it's genetic. <laughs> like I think my dad showers every day, but other than that like people in my sh in my family shower like max once a week. <laughs> it's just the way we are. Every single one of us. <laughs> Except my dad. He has to go to work. <laughs> I don't know. I think my brother may share a little more often because he actually like works out. Now my little brother, the youngest one, he, I swear that boy, he showers once every like three months. <laughs> And he never changes his clothes. He never leaves the house, though. So, like... <laughs> More than you, no less than me. I shower, like, once a week. <laughs> is your family on a mining colony? <laughs> Where water is rationed? No. We're just all antisocial. <laughs> Once a week isn't that bad, right? <laughs> I shower twice a day what bro I don't do anything twice a day except maybe eat depends on the day <laughs> what do I do twice a day I, uh, nothing I, bet, I, I guess it's not bad if you don't go out much. I do, though, because I have class. I leave the house every day but Sunday. I have class and work and stuff. <laughs> I know I need to shower more. I just don't want to. No one realizes you don't shower often without telling them it's perfectly normal. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, it's, I mean, it's not like I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that's one thing people like wouldn't mention because they'd, they'd be afraid of being rude. It would be rude. <laughs> it would be rude to be like, you stink. <laughs> Currently in the shower right now. Then how? Why did you bring your? Why did you bring your, your phone in the shower? How about brushing your teeth? Do you do that twice a day? I do that once a day.
Do you earnestly not get smelly and stinky? I don't know. I don't have the best sense of smell. <laughs> like, I don't know. I know so many times. Like, I was in this one... I was in this one D&D &D group once, and there was, like, the, like, the adults that were supervising, like, you know, supervising us, were, like, they came in one day, and they brought, like, small deodorant, it was just a bunch of boys, and then, like, me and my friend, and she, one of them came in one day with a bunch of deodorant, and, and she was like, today it's D&D and D&D, and D. Dungeons and Dragons and deodorants. Because she was like, it stinks in here. And I was like, I don't smell anything. <laughs> I don't smell anything. <laughs> I'm just used to it. Because nobody in my family showers and we never clean anything. I don't, I genuinely don't smell stuff. <laughs> the deodorant was for you? No, actually, actually, she, she was like, no, it's not for you. It's for all the boys. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> She legitimately told me, like, it's it's not for you. I was like, oh, okay. Are you sure? <laughs> I mean, I, I won't correct you, but... Just because I'm a girl doesn't mean I'm not stinky. Because <laughs> she didn't think you'd stink. <laughs> Apparently... You become nose blind to your own smell. This is true. <laughs> no, recently I had this problem where I was like, bro, I smell really bad. And so I went and I, I like, I took a shower and I'd like be obsessively putting on deodorant and I couldn't get the smell to go away. And you know what? The deodorant soured. My freaking deodorant stank! <laughs> I was like... I just randomly had the thought, wait a minute. I swear it gets worse every time I put on deodorant. And then I smelled the deodorant and I was like, Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Man, the thing I was trying to make me stink less was making me stink more. <laughs> freaking inspired. I don't know how it expired. I put it on like twice a day. <laughs> I just obsessively put it on. But no, it just kind of died. <laughs> how old is your deodorant to expire? I don't know, man. Like, I don't know how long- I don't know how long I had it before I, like, started using it, too. So my- my- my mom buys that stuff, like, in advance normally, you know? Plus, you're a living biohazard. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta crank it up to BSL one whenever I come in the room for real. <laughs> Wonder what girl dinner is gonna be for plushy girl dinner. I've heard of that. Was it like? I don't know. Normally for dinner, my parents feed me. For lunch, recently. <laughs> I've been going to like, there's, there's, we have a coffee place on campus, but they also smell like, s sell like a bunch of snacks. I've just been getting, going over there, getting a blueberry bagel and a bag of popcorn or chips or whatever. <laughs> it's for my lunch. Well, it's not really lunch because it's at like two or three o'clock because I have classes during lunch. It's part of my problem. Look. I have a class from 11.30 to 1.35 p.m. So, <laughs> and then after that, I just, I just have a bagel and a bag of popcorn. <laughs> it's yummy, though. It's like something really unhealthy, like a cigarette, a Pop-Tart, and two strawberry milk. 
That's crazy. <laughs> so many carbs though? Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's yummy though. Also, I've, all, I've, I've eaten almost all my Halloween candy already. <laughs> because I've been eating so much candy. If you give me candy, I will eat it. <laughs> Just a plain bagel? No, a blueberry bagel. As a biologist, don't you recognize bad nutrition and hygiene? You know, there's a difference between recognizing it and actually, like, giving it crap. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I, I only have so much energy and I choose to use it on more important things. <laughs> and the choice between getting sleep and showering, I pick getting sleep. The boy dinner is just a protein shake in the body, so what's falling into me? <laughs> the smellier you are, the more prone you are to catching on fire? <laughs> that makes no sense. Showering is not a major time sink. I've gotten better, but I used to shower for like a freaking hour. Like I get in the shower and I swore it was like 10 minutes and I come out, be like an hour later. I was like, what? Where did the time go? So what I started doing is I started playing music when I take a shower and then that helps me keep track of the time. It's very helpful because I just get lost in there. Like I get lost in there be in there for like sometimes i'd be in there for two hours and i come out and my family be like you were in there for like two hours i was like oh really like what i just i just go in there you know i just be in there for a while but but i i since i started playing the music it's been much better also, playing music is nice because it keeps me from thinking. Because if I start thinking, I'm just going to stare at a wall for like three hours. <laughs> that's, that's what I do in the car too as I play music, you know? Because otherwise, I'm just going to think and I'm going to be so busy thinking that I'm going to hit something. <laughs> I can't focus if there's not something going on. Just cram all your showers into one time frame. Yeah, that was part of it, you know? That was part of it. That I... Sh it took so long for me to shower that I, I just... I, I couldn't do it that often. But now that I'm... Now that I'm getting faster, I need to start showering more. I just... I have a hard time fitting it into my schedule because it's like a new thing I do. <laughs> I used to just take a shower for like an hour on Saturday night and that was it. Why not take a bath instead? I don't I don't really like baths. Take freezing cold showers so you're only in there for as long as you need to be. If I take freezing cold showers, I'm gonna be shivering all day. I don't like that. Oh, bye bye, uh, FPK. Bye. I don't know. I feel like I take like a normal temperature shower. Like some people like cold showers. Some people like hot showers. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I take a normal temperature shower. <laughs> I take a normal temperature shower. Nope, excuse me. <laughs> what time is it for you? 5.53 p.m. <laughs> Do 
The noise is peak. That was that was my burp. That's what it sounds like. It sounds so weird. I don't, I don't know why it sounds like that. It sounds like a squeak. I don't I don't know. I don't know why. Clip it, no! Oh come on. You know with all the with all the time you're saying clip it, you're gonna become a freaking plushy ASMR clip channel at this point. Guys are crazy. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, I don't know. Some people have cute sneezes or whatever. I'm me over here with the burp that's just. <laughs> I don't know. Why is it like that? I don't know. <laughs> Actual dog toy noise. <laughs> I'm not a dog toy. Come on. <laughs> That's, that's messed up. Holy crap. Uh, man. It's weird too, because I didn't always burp like that. I just started to randomly. And it's always like that now. But why? Why? Why is it like that? I don't know. I don't know. I'm head out. Bye, plushy. Bye. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm so tired. I want to sleep. But I also don't, because sleeping is boring and time-consuming. I'm always on things for being time-consuming, and yet the time I spend on my phone... <laughs> the double standards are crazy. The double standards are insane, man. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I, I just want to spend time... On the things I want to do, you know? Hey, I don't... I don't know. You, know, you know what I mean, right? I wanna, if I'm gonna waste time, I wanna waste it doing something I wanna do. <laughs> You're a clipping channel now? That's crazy! Oh no, now I have to <laughs> Now I have to live in constant fear of being clipped. That's <laughs> That's actually crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Ten K special soon? Yeah, hopefully. What should I do for a ten K special? I waste my time deciding what to do with my time, bro. <laughs> You're so me. That's so true. I. <laughs> I, uh. I. 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 I forgot what I was saying. Oh, 10k special. What should I do? I don't know. What do people normally do for 10k special? <laughs> 10k special stream to the protozoa ASMR. It's very time consuming to decide what to do with your time. By the time you decide, you run out of time. Why? Why? Why is it like this? So true. Why? Why though? Whenever I have a day off, I'm like, what should I do? All day. And then it's like 2am, I'm like, I know what I'm gonna do! 
<laughs> this is at 2 a.m. go, Ferb, I know what we're gonna do today! <laughs> Except by then, it's technically tomorrow. Before shower ASMR? Oh no. That's crazy. I can't, I don't know, I can't do like a shower ASMR because I know people would hear me, that'd be weird. I think the last thing you want to hear when when your sibling is in the shower is like, chat, blah blah blah, <laughs> or something, <laughs> or like, not chat or like something else. I don't know, It'd be crazy. Fucking <laughs> stone ASMR. I could probably stream Deep Dark Galactic, not on the laptop, but on the computer. Like, I could- I have some games. I could stream games. I've done that a lot before, like... <laughs> I come- I'm not a gamer. Because, for the reason of- I feel like to call yourself a gamer, you have to know about games and be good at them. And that, I'm- I, That I, I don't do. I do play games. <laughs> I, I'm not good at them. However, I do- I do play them. You've done everything but shower? That's crazy. I, I, I shower. Any favorite games? Oh, that's tough. Favorite games, um... I don't know, I've been playing... Mostly recently I've been playing like... Stardew Valley, I've been playing a lot. Uh... Zelda Tears of the Kingdom I'm trying to finish. Um... Minecraft. Uh, I play Minecraft with my brother quite a bit. Yeah, so that's normally what I play. All that matters is enjoying the game to be a gamer. Then I am a gamer. <laughs> Ever played Subnautica? I have not. I have not played it. I think... I can't remember. Is it on? I have... Xbox Game Pass. So anything on there is game. <laughs> I could just download it. <laughs> Crazy. My par my dad pays for it. It's great. To do a gaming stream for 10k? Alright, that will be my plan. Have you tried Disco, uh, at least a little? I don't know. I have not. You made a real game unless you've beaten Minesweeper easy? Still in progress. <laughs> I have not. Elysium? Yeah, I have I have not. I don't- I have not. <laughs> Flappy Bird Dream Win? Oh, not Flappy Bird. Oh, uh, bye, Robert. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for all the gifted uh, memberships. I almost said gifted subs. <laughs> We're not on Twitch. We're not on Twitch. <laughs> gifted memberships. I've never even streamed on Twitch, but I always default to gifted subs. <laughs> I watch too much. I don't even watch that much Twitch. I don't know. Most streamers I watch stream on YouTube, and that's mostly because I keep forgetting Twitch exists.
<laughs> Angry Birds stream. <laughs> oh man, I haven't played Angry Birds in a while. It's one of those I played a lot as like a child. As a child. I played like, Angry Birds, Minecraft Pocket Edition. Freaking Minecraft Pocket Edition. Uh, Bloons TD? I played Bloons TD 6 before. OMG, I catch plushy stream. Oh, welcome! I'm just waiting for it to be dinner. I've, I've finished studying. Yay! <laughs> Elden Ring, I've not played. I, I, I've not played a lot. I've, there's a lot of things I haven't played. I, I have the problem of, I, like, I just play the same things over and over and over, and I never like. I really only play games with people. I like it's a social thing for me. Like when I'm alone and I have a lot of free time, I don't play games really. Like, I don't. I play them with people, normally. Or like, if I'm doing it like as YouTube content or like a stream or something, like, that's different because I get to interact with people. But like, if I'm just playing by myself, I don't really. <laughs> I just sit on my phone and scroll to you through YouTube Shorts and wish I could turn YouTube Shorts off so I couldn't find them ever again. <laughs> I want access to YouTube, but I don't want access to YouTube Shorts. It's draining my time. Holy crap, where does it go? There's nothing like the feeling of looking up from your phone and being like, It's 4 a.m.? What the heck? <laughs> what the heck? I thought it was 10 p.m. <laughs> You're describing my life so well and it's crushing. <laughs> it's, it's just how it be. Phones are time machines. Phones and showers? And cars, and, uh, what's another thing? They're all time machines. I swear. Sleeping. Sleeping's a time machine. I go to sleep, and I wake up, and suddenly I just lost, like, four or five hours of my day. Gone. <laughs> I should sleep more, but, you know, it's time consuming. Imagine the stuff I could get done if I didn't have to sleep. But, inversely, if nobody had to sleep, we just get assigned more stuff. Like, that's always my thing. I'm always like, oh man, I wish there were more hours in a day. But the truth is, if there were more hours in a day, there'd be more stuff to do in a day. <laughs> They're going to push us to the max no matter what. It's, it's just how it be. Will be having dreams when they sleep? I too, kinda. I never remember them. But do you ever have it, does it ever happen to you that when you wake up, you're like, you are confused on like the alarm? Like when I wake up and I hear my alarm, my brain will explain it in the weirdest place. Like that's, that's not my alarm. That's just this other sound that makes no sense like I, I always find something that makes no sense and say oh it's not that it's it's this noise i don't like i'm very confused when i wake up sometimes because i forget i'm not dreaming i had a dream last night that i slept in really late and i missed one of my classes and i ended up sleeping kind of late and missing half of one of my classes <laughs> it was kind of weird Sleeping is literally just going forward in time. I remember when I was a kid, like, you know, I share a room with my sister. And I'd be awake, and I'd be looking at her sleeping, and in my head I'd go. For her, it's tomorrow already. It's so weird to think about. Like, for her, it's tomorrow already. <laughs> spooky. Very spooky. It's tomorrow already for her, but I'm still stuck in today because I'm awake. Good night, all. Nice stream, plushie. Oh, thank you, thank you. I 
My sleep schedule is all over the place until recently. Mine still is. I can't get a handle on it. I'm so close to being done with the semester that at this point, like, I literally don't care. <laughs> but here's the thing. When I'm on break, I'll be like, ah, it doesn't matter. I'm on break. I can stay up as late as I want because I can sleep in as late as I want. And I... Mindset. I cannot get out. I cannot get out. Let's go. Stream still going. Yeah, it is. I really thought dinner would be soon, but it's still not. Am I supposed to pick it up? I don't think so. <laughs> so many times I've been in charge of meals and didn't know whatever the like hours, and then my parents were like, "Have you eaten yet?" And I'm like, "Oh, uh, I was supposed to." Mid country is the powerhouse in the cell. You're darn right, it is. <laughs> For the last few days, I've gotten up recently. Uh, I've gotten up early morning, like some normal people. <laughs> like some normal person, which I'm not. I have to get up at like 6 30 for my 8 a.m. classes. It's not like I want to. I end up leaving like 15 to 20 minutes late <laughs> and showing up 15 to 20 minutes late. I ruined my sleep schedule and I can't fall asleep until 4 a.m. and wake up about 2 to 3. Oh, that, that really sucks. That's unfortunate. During breaks, I've got so much so much time, so I just happen to adhere to a sleep schedule. But when it matters, during school, I can't sleep at one one at all. No, because during break, I don't adhere to a sleep schedule. Because, like, when I'm on break, I'm like, screw it all. I can do whatever I want. From Kitchen Echo Show. Yeah, that, that was the di that's a dinner announcement. But like, uh, don't check the media channel. What's in the media channel? I gotta check now. It's because you said that. What's in here? Oh my gosh, there it is! It's the clip! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I gotta go eat dinner, guys. I gotta go have some pizza. Well, thank you for keeping me company while I was studying. It was actually quite helpful. Help me stay on track. I will. I'll, I'll try not to forget to shower and do laundry. I'll. I'll try. I make no promises. Well, let me. I don't... I don't know. Um. Uh, <laughs> well, bye guys. Bye bye.